A k-map can also be used to create a minimized product of sums logic expression uh, in a similar way that a canonical product of sums is created uh, as an analog to a canonical sum of products. So if you recall when we looked at a sum of products, what we were doing in a k-map was circling ones. And what we were trying to do is create a min term, or excuse me, a product term that would produce the ones that we circled. And then what we do with all those product terms is we or them together or we sum them together and that gives us a sum of products. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we can use a k-map and do the dual of that by creating circles around the zeros and then taking those and multiplying them together to create a product of sums forms which will give us the equivalent logic function <clears throat> or logic behavior but it will do it in a different topology. So let's take a look at how we might do that with a two input example. So let's say we have our two input K map and we'll have the inputs called A and B and we'll put the input codes along the sides, zero and one. And then what we'll do is we'll have, uh, this is cell zero, cell one, cell two, and cell three. And let's just say that we had zero, one, zero, one. And let's label our variables along the outsides. And before I do that, I need to stop and think about the difference between a product of sums and a sum of products. <clears throat> In a sum of products, we were labeling the variables along the outside of the k-map for when the variable was a one, <clears throat> because we would include that variable uncomplemented in the product term. Well, now we're gonna do the exact dual of that. So what we are gonna do is we are interested in creating a sum term that we will include the variable in the sum term. If it's a zero, we'll include it uncomplemented. And if it's a one, we will include it complemented. So that means that when we create the labels around the outside of the k-map, we want to put them in the opposite way. So for example, a in this column is a zero, so I'm going to put that as the uncomplemented version. And then over here, a is a one for this column, that's going to be the complemented version. So notice that that's the exact opposite of the way we did it when we did a sum of products. So this is, we remind ourselves, this is a product of sums. Now, over here, this is where b is a zero, so we're going to leave it uncomplemented, and b is a one right here, so we're going to put that label complement. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to create prime implicates again, but we're going to follow the a set of rules that looks like the dual of what we did with the, the sum of products. So let's put down the product of sum rules, and this is for a k-map. So here's the procedure that we're going to follow. So step one, just like last, just like with the sum of products, we are going to circle groups within the k-map, but this time we're going to do it of zeros. So this is a key, the key thing right here is we are going to create terms which will produce the zeros uh, from the k-map. Okay, so similar rules as last time. So largest number of zeros, largest number of zeros possible, up to, or with the constraint, that they are, they only encompass, they only encompass <coughs> neighbors, or neighboring cells, so no diagonals, and they have to be groups of, we'll call it two to the n, or powers to the two, <coughs> so this is gonna be <coughs> circles of one that contain one, two, four, eight, or sixteen zeros. And we just stop at sixteen because that's a four input K map. And then we enter as many as many circles as possible in order to cover all the zeros. And then finally we label each one again is a prime implicant. And so what that means is that we are going to create a term which will produce the zeros uh, representing the outputs corresponding to a zero within this. And when they don't produce the zeros, inherently the product of sums will create a one. Okay, 
So then the next step of that, well actually let's do that for the K map right here. So in this example, when we had a product or a sum of products, we circled the ones. In this situation, we're going to circle the zeros. So that's what the circling looks like. Now what we're going to do is we are going to create a sum term. And this is for the prime implicant. I'm going to abbreviate these as PI. Now, if you remember, when we did it for a sum of products, we created a product term. We're going to create a product of sums. We're going to create a sum term for that circle. So this will cr create some, some sum term. And it's going to have the same properties uh, except in a dual nature as with the sum of products. So we're going to evaluate, evaluate each <coughs> input one by one. And what we're going to do is, if the circle covers a region where the input is a 1, then we leave the variable in the sum term. So the variable will be complemented. <clears throat> and then if the input is a 0, the variable is uncomplemented. So this right here, these things right here, the complemented and uncomplemented, that corresponds up here to the labels that we put. So notice that B for this particular row is a 0. Well, that I have the label as an uncomplemented version. So that's where the 0 and uncomplemented come from. Similarly down here, this call or this row has b is equal to a one, so I have the label as the complement of it. So now what we want to do is look at the final case where we can minimize the logic, and that is when the input is both a zero and one. The variable is excluded. And that's where you can start getting rid of in variables in each of these terms. Okay, so then the final thing you do is you logically multiply all prime implicants. And each prime implicant is a sum term. So for this example, this is a very simple example. Let's take a look at it. I want to go through and create a sum term for this prime implicant. And I'm going to evaluate each input variable one by one. So let's take a look at A. The circle covers a region where A is both a 0 and a 1. So it's a 0 and a 1. So that means that it spans the region where A would be uncomplemented and complemented. So A is excluded. So that's this right here. That's this situation. So in my sum term over here, A is gone. Now I have, I'm going to evaluate B. And the circle covers a region where B is a 0. And so I'm going to include B in the sum term uncomplemented. Now in this situation, there is only one prime implicant. There's only one sum term. This is a technically a sum term. And then that's it. So now when I take that and I multiply them all together, I only had one. But f is now in this situation going to be equal to simply b. So that makes, <clears throat> that makes sense, you know, when you think about the truth table for this. If I listed the truth table, a, b, and f, and I looked at this again, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and the output was 0, 1, 0, 1, notice that the output tracks the input B. So you could just connect the output to B and the logic would work. So if the truth table was like that, everything's great. Now, let's compare that briefly to the sum of products approach. If I would have done a sum of products, I would have circled the ones and I would have gone through each variable one by one and evaluated them and figured out what the product term was. So if I did that, notice that this circle covers a region where A is both a zero and a one and it is excluded. And then in this situation, for a product term, the circle covers a region where B was a 1. So I bring it in uncomplemented. So if I did a, a sum of products, I would have came up with the exact same logic expression for this example. So it works both ways. OK, so that's a product of sums approach. And now what we want to do is Let's take a look at another example using a three input K map and let's go ahead and create the product of sums by circling zeros. So let's take a look at this K map right here. 
So I'm going to come along. It's got three inputs, and we'll label them A, B, and C. I'll put my input codes along the top and the bottom, around the side, only labeling or only having them differ by one. And I'll go ahead and put the inputs in here, or the outputs, 10110011. And now what I'm going to do is let's label the label the K map in terms of the variables. So we have this region right here, A is a zero. So for a product of sums, remember this is always a product of sums, this is going to be represent the variable A. And over here, B, or excuse me, A is going to be a one, so that's where A naught is. And then for this region right here, B is a one, so that's where B naught is going to be. And then finally, for this region and this region, this is where B is a zero, so that's going to be uncomplemented. So the exact opposite labeling as with a sum of products when we do it like this. And then let's go over here. This region covers, or this is where the region is C is a zero for this row. So that's going to be uncomplemented. And then C is equal to a one right here, so that's going to be C naught. Now we come into here and it's time to circle zeros. So let's see, where can we find our zeros? If we start with this zero right here, we're going to circle it, and does it have any neighbors? It doesn't have any neighbors going this way. Diagonal is not considered a neighbor. It doesn't have any this way. It does have one this way, though. If you notice that, it actually can form a circle with this wraparound neighbor, and that forms the largest circle possible. Okay, then we can come over here and pick up this one right here. So we actually have two sum terms, two prime implicants, which we can create. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, figure out what the logic expression is. Let's do this one first. Let's take the, uh, the wraparound one. So I'm going to go through each input variable one by one. So this region, or this circle, covers a region where A is a 0 and a 1, so it's excluded. This circle covers a region where B is a 0, so I leave B in the sum term uncomplemented. So the sum term for this is simply b. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want, or excuse me, now what I want to do is I want to look at input variable c. So it covers a region where c is a 1, so I bring c into the sum term complemented. So now remember, this is a, this is a sum term, so I'm going to have b ordered with c naught. And now, and that's, it, that's the entire sum term for that prime implicant. Now let's do this one right here that covers uh, these two cells. So I'm going to come down here and I'll look at this. This circle covers a region where A is a 1, so I leave it in the sum term complemented. It covers a region where B is a 0, so I leave it in the sum term uncomplemented. And it covers a region where C is both a 0 and a 1, so I exclude it. So at this point I have the sum term for that prime implicant, which is A naught ordered B, and the final step in this, in creating the logic expression, is to say f is equal to this sum term multiplied by that sum term. So I need to put parentheses around these two and and them together. And that now is my minimized sum of products. Okay, let's do a four input example. So what we'll do here is let's start with a K map that now has four inputs. And let's go like this. Four inputs is going to have 16 cells this and draw out all my cells and let's call the inputs a b c and d and let's label the input code 00011110 differing by their neighbors by only one input change so 00011110 and let's just say for example that we had the input code or the output code 0000 and then we had 1110 and 0000 and then finally 1110. So I come up to that and I'm ready to go. What I'd like to do is circle groups of zeros. So one of the obvious ones in this example is to pick up these four right here. Four is a power of two, so that works well. And now I can pick up these four right here, except I notice that they also have neighbors going this way to the wraparound to pick up these. And that would then give me a larger circle but it would also give me a power of 2. So now I have a circle that covers 8 cells. So I want to have the largest circle possible because then that gives me the uh, <coughs> smallest sum term. Okay, so let's take, uh, let's take this horizontal circle right here and let's find the sum term. So let's go through variable by variable. Okay? 
well, before we do that, let's label this up. So where is A? So let's put the labels on here quickly. So A is a zero for this region. So it's going to be A naught. Or excuse me, excuse me. A is a zero, so this is A. A is a one over here, so that's where it's complemented. So let's forget about that guy. Okay? Then B is a one right here, so this is where it's going to be B naught. And then B is a zero for these regions, so that'll be B. And then over here, let's put our, uh, over here, let's put C. So C is a uh, zero here, so it's going to be C. And then it's a one here, so that's where C naught. We'll kind of draw that around there. And then finally, we come over here, and we got this is where D is a one, so that's where it's D naught. And then this is where D is a, uh, D is a zero, so that's where it's uncomplimented. <laughs> okay. So we come down here, and we're going to do this horizontal one, variable by variable. This circle covers a region where A is both a 0 and a 1, so it's excluded. It covers a region where B is both a 0 and a 1, so it's excluded. So A and B are gone. Now we come over here, and this one's actually kind of easy because it's only spanning one row. We can look at it and say, this spans a region where C is a 1, so I bring C into the sum term, complemented. And then it spans a region where D is a 1, so I bring it into the sum term, complemented. So that's going to be the sum term for that horizontal circle. Okay, now let's do the 8-cell circle. And it is now going to be variable by variable. It covers a region where A is a 0 and a 1, so A is excluded. It covers a region where B is a 0. So notice here and here. So then that is where B can come in uncomplimented. And let's see here. Then we go to C. Now this spans the entire stretch of C and D. So it covers a region where C is both a 0 and a 1, so it's excluded. And it covers a region where D is both a 0 and a 1, so it's excluded. So the actual sum term for this is simply B. So now what's the final logic expression? I take my two prime implicate sum terms and I AND them together. I do that by putting parentheses around them. And I do the AND operation. And that is the final product of sums logic expression. And we say that this is minimized. So it is the minimized logic expression in a product of sums form.